I decided to mine deeper into the database provided openly, it's open source by the Ghana Mining Repository. So I went as far back as 1988, the data provided. And between 1988 and 2008, we have 96 licenses issued, only 96. 1988 to 2008. 96. 96 mining yes. licenses. As compared to 1,503, 1,503 under the Akufado Baumia administration. Now, Paul Grave talks about the fact that there is an advantage in licensing people in the space because it makes them responsible. He would have been right if that is what has happened on the ground. So you cannot go on this licensing spree. Total recklessness in terms of the licensing regime. Because, you see, licensing must come necessarily with your capacity to monitor. We heard the expert talk about the lack of compliance in the field, the lack of supervision. So when you are issuing these licenses, like there's no tomorrow, what is the capacity, particularly of the Minerals Commission, of the Environmental Protection Agency, mm -hmm. to make sure that these people you are granting licenses to comply Follow the rules. What is even your staffing strength? Have you employed people? Have you opened offices across the country where this mining is taking place to be able to make sure? Because, you see, human beings as we are, if there is really no supervision and people believe they will get away if they engage in irresponsible mining, if they enter forest areas, if they mine in our river bodies, which is not allowed under Ghanaian law, if they know that they will do all of this without reclaiming the lands and the authorities don't have the capacity to be around, to be there, to supervise, then what is the sense in engaging in all of this massive issuance of licenses? But you see, Alfred, you have not heard the worst. Let me reveal to you this morning that to my shock, and I'm sure many Ghanaians will be shocked this morning, particularly organized labor, mm. to my shock, whilst the president was meeting organized labor mm -hmm. that same day, will you believe that new licenses were being issued for these companies to start mining that same day, uh, the 3rd of October. Are you saying that just uh, this today is the 5th? So yes, what? 3rd two October, days ago, two days ago, 11 new licenses to wait, companies. Wait. Shocking. And wait, this, wait. This, this, this data is available on the Ghana Mining Repository. And I'm going to go through the companies. I see. Whilst the meeting was going on, 11 companies were issued with licenses to start mining on the 3rd of October. 11 companies. 11. And they are Rich Land Mining and Trading Enterprise, Confidence Mining Enterprise, Grade Mining Enterprise, Ajobia Mining Enterprise, Techimresu Mining Enterprise, Precious, I would do mining enterprise, internal mining enterprise, certainly internal affairs, you know, a lot of internal shenanigans. Ah. Ajobia Mining, Techimresu Mining Enterprise, Osajifu Abba Mining and Trading Enterprise, Osajifu very interesting Abba. names. Osajifu Abba Mining and Trading Enterprise, and Adikamfu Titifu Mining and Trading Enterprise. 11 of them. And that same day, was the president... On the third yes, of at October. a time that everybody is saying that suspend these issuance of licenses. We want a ban on all forms of mining. We want a state of emergency. At the time that there is all of this upheaval, hue and cry, by the Ghanaian people, 
as we speak, people are being held in prison cells unconstitutionally, in flagrant violation of Article 296, abuse of discretionary power, high handedness, Gestapo arrest, people who had even no business with the demonstration, some of them innocent bystanders. Some of them held even beyond 48 hours. The police has admitted. Total violation of the Constitution, abuse of office, flagrant violation of human rights. Even those who are demonstrating in solidarity of these people, look at the number of police personnel deployed. I ask myself, the bad guys, I call them mass murderers. These mass murderers who are hell-bent on killing all of us. I heard the Ochehini a few days ago say that he has seen the deformities himself. Babies are being born with deformities, deformities in his area. We know that the, the, the dangers to our health, cancer, liver disease, kidney failure, and all of that. And you are saying and, that... And these security personnel are not interested in the bad guys. They have left the Galamse sites. I have been there. I'm doing a lot of oversight there. No security. They are having a field day, the bad guys, those destroying river bodies. And it is rather the good guys standing up against Galamse. I am so upset this morning that as a nation, look, it's a scar on the conscience of all of those in authority who are doing this to these young people, violating their rights mutilating their human rights in this manner. And yet, whilst the president pays lip service, look, in this country, what have governance experts, constitutional lawyers said? Have they all not agreed? All the experts, I added them, that under the 1992 constitution of Ghana, the president of Ghana has too much power. Mm -hmm. Look at what is happening to the demonstrators. Is that not we have all agreed? That the president has too much power. See what is happening. I'm a governor, Felicity, Vama War, and others. Look at what is happening to them. President has too much power. Everybody is pandering to him. That's what he wants. See what the president did to Dom Levo. See how the president is appointing MPP hacks into the judiciary. Known partisan hatchet men and women. Look at what the president has done to the Electoral Commission. Apia Hini, the known MPP food soldier. So all of us have agreed in this country that the president has too much power. How come when it comes to the president doing right by us, saving our lives, stopping this mass murder, suddenly he has no power? Listen to my brother, Dr. Palgrave. Oh, you know, it's not easy. Uh, we have to meet stakeholders. Uh, we, we will need time. Suddenly. A president who has so much power, who everybody, he himself, admitted in opposition that this constitution gives our presidents so much power. Look, I put out a 15-point action plan that any president who has the country at heart doesn't need to be calling these meetings. I agree with Professor Jampo. Those meetings are totally needless and worthless, useless. If, let me go through my 15-point plan. Mm -hmm. Very but, quickly. But even before, we but you're saying that on the 3rd of October, oh. which was two days ago, this document is, is online. It's online. You go into the Ghana Mining Repository. Ghana Mining Repository. Most scandalous. When Ghanaians... Why they were meeting with, with you? they were meeting with you? you 11 know. companies were... I have, yeah, 3rd October 2024. 11 was licenses were... Issued. 11 licenses. And they said they should start mining immediately. <laughs> start date. It's yes, start date. Go on the Mining Repository website. Start date, 3rd October 2024. Western region. Central region. It's all there. Secondi Takradi district. 11 companies. And then in September, whilst organized labor put out their ultimatum. Yeah. Are you aware that another 12 licenses, they asked them to start? Ah. 25th September 2024, Asecro Mining Enterprise, New Procedure Mining Enterprise, Kingdom Royal Mining Enterprise, Top Notch Mining Enterprise, RY Goldfields Limited, Bezaz Limited, Bay Logistics Limited, 
Children are no gold mines. Sure. All of them, sure. FG Minerals Limited, they have all been given new leases, new mining licenses. All of them. Because Sharon has been in for Yes, wow. but, but they have a new one now in the Western North area, Seishi also, for gold mining. They received this 18 September. So whilst all of this is going on, Obun Tijai, they can't be bothered. They don't care. So why will anybody be attending these meetings? And they, look, this is such a betrayal. So president calls people, let's meet, let's discuss this matter. And you can't even have a stalemate. You can't tell your lands minister, stop approving these licenses. You can't tell Minerals Commission that, look, we are in a crisis. At least when you are in a crisis, you stop digging so that we don't die. Mm? You, do, you, you want to at least make an intervention. At least let there be a stalemate. At least suspend the issuance of these licenses. Will you believe that? So 23, since organized labor issued their statement mm -hmm. and their ultimatum, from that period to 3rd okay. October 2024, 23 new licenses. It was just two days ago. Can you believe that? And I have done some more work. I'm sorry I'm causing people a lot of uh, anxiety and making them lose appetite this morning. Will you believe that more DCs are joining the free? Um, you mean DCs? Are... Latest work I have done on this matter. DCs are now openly registering companies and going for mining licenses themselves. Which DCs are those? The DC for Impoho, on the 18th of October 2023, registered JK Sem Mining Company Limited. JK Sem. JK Sem. Immediately, on the 17th of November, he applied to mine in his district. And it's here. Go on the mining repository. You see J.K. Sam. So you're talking about Ignatius Asa Mensah. Ignatius Asa Mensah, the DC for Mpoho. And I have the cadastral map here. You see, no, you, see camera, you see river bodies, forests all over in the area of interest, his concession. Guess what? Whilst all of this is going on, he has been asked to start mining 9th August 2024. That's the start date. 9th August 2024. And he has a five year lease. JK Sam, Honorable Ignatius Asa Mensa, the DC for Impoho. The people, this is the chair of DICEC, the people who we are relying on to ban all forms of mining. That is the demand by organized labor, by the Catholic Bishop Conference, by the Apostolic, Apostolic Fathers, Fathers, by the Chief Imam, the most, everybody. The people we are counting on the work is difficult. to ban all forms of mining, they are joining the fray like there's no tomorrow. They are registering companies and they are being issued licenses and now they are doing it themselves directly, openly. That is not all. I decided to dig deeper. Then I discovered that Honorable Frederick Crunchy, MC for Amenfi East, he hasn't heard all the things going on. On, on Tijai, on T, he can't be bothered. He also registers Kofreze Construction Limited. K O F R E Z E. Kofreze. I, I hope I'm pronouncing it well. Yeah. Kofreze Construction Limited. <laughs> And when you go on the Ghana Mining Repository, he has also been issued a license in his area, Wasa Amenfi East. The people who are to protect, mm -hmm. head of DICEC. And he is to start mining. Indeed, he has started mining since the 21st of March, 2024. The Honorable Frederick Crunchy, MC for Amenfi East. So you see what is going on. Okay. The president is not cracking the whip. They are pampering those who are involved. We've talked about wound to me. You remember the Minerals Commission issued a statement. The lands minister issued a statement that wound to me was not licensed to go into the Inrim forest. Yet nothing happened to him. We were told that there was some investigation going on. Nothing has happened. So are you surprised? 
more and more of the president's appointees are joining the fray. And where is the source? What's the source of this document you are putting out? Go on the Ghana Mining Repository and look for Kofreze Construction and Engineering Limited. And then you can make a formal application to the Office of the Register of Companies for who the directors are, who the owners of these companies are. Yes, because so, we haven't independently checked, so I just need yes, to... Yes, yes. So, so we, these are, we, these are my that. sources, official sources. So, okay. so, so look at the crisis we are in. At a time where we face an existential threat, President invites organized labor to a meeting, and 11 new licenses that same day go and start mining when people are calling for an overall ban of all forms of mining. Then you go into the companies who are being given latest licenses, and you see heads of dissects, the district security councils, the municipal metropolitan security councils, the people we are relying on to stop the menace, they are neck deep. And then you see, Paul Grave was talking about uh, economic benefits. Mm -hmm. Look, there can be no economic benefit that can equate one human life. No economic benefit. No economic benefit. Look, if all the monies we have received, look at how much came in from, from, from COVID. Mm -hmm. They don't talk about the COVID windfall. Billions of Ghana cities. That didn't save our economy. We are bankrupt, we are insolvent, we have been downgraded by all the sovereign rating agencies from Fitch to Standard & Poor's to Moody's. We have, for the first time in our history, forced even pensioner bondholders to take a haircut. Everybody is taking a haircut. Even if you are as bad as me, you are forced to take a haircut. So, economic quagmire, despite all our resources. So, it is not a matter of money coming in. In any case, I did some work on the other notorious company, Elite Minerals Company Limited, mm -hmm. owned by the same presidential daughter's ambulance cabal. Elite Minerals is owned by Awo Mensa, who is a business partner to Edwina Akufuadu. They set up in Siomnam. And Alvin Mensa, who is another business partner of the president's daughters. You know, remember I exposed mm -hmm. them in the infamous ambulance procurement scandal, in the $34.9 million ambulance spare parts scandal. I discovered that the same cabal is neck deep in this mining crisis. I decided to intercept their tax obligations. I have a copy here. And over the last three years, they have made, I'll give you a copy you can be perusing. These are the intercepted tax payer ledgers. Mm -hmm. The tax records of Elite Minerals Company Limited, mm -hmm. the company associated with the president's daughters. Now, see. over the last two and a half years, they have made 53 million CDs, and all they have paid, according to tax records, and if you notice, from 2021, mm -hmm. they were always, you know, defaulting, they won't pay, GRA has to find yeah. them, write to them. You see that, mm -hmm. you see that in the documents, it's all there. Reluctantly, they have paid only 132,000 Ghana cities. Can you believe that? Despite all the, and it's in flagrant violation of our laws, how much mining companies must pay. So, so these companies are not even paying their fair share. So there's penalty of um, some 1,000. Yes, many penalties, many penalties. Very notorious company. Okay. Notorious. And, and the, 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 the impunity. And you see, if anybody tells you that these companies, are, look, Companies that will not be compliant, that will, that will mine in water bodies, will be so reckless, they, they clearly will not even pay taxes. They will, be, they will be evasive when it comes to their tax obligation. So look, mm -hmm. let us be very clear. Okay. We are where we are because of official complicity. The work, the oversight work that we have done, it is clear that there is no commitment, no commitment. I made reference to the 15-point action plan that I 
reflected on mm -hmm. and said that, look, if, you have, a, if mm -hmm. you have a Ghanaian president with so much power, as we have all admitted, I said, one, the first thing that any president committed to this fight to show goodwill, good faith, would do, one, instruct the attorney general and the IGP to discontinue the unconstitutional harassment of all anti galamse protesters. That's the first thing any president who cares about the people will do. Two, sack all regional ministers who have failed to prevent Galamses as chairs of their respective regional security councils. Three, sack all MMDCs who have failed to stop Galamse as heads of their respective municipal metropolitan district security council. It's because of not sacking them. That is why others are joining the fray. That the DC for Impoho and Amenfi East and all of that. Four, reshuffle the ministers responsible for lands and natural resources, environment, science and technology, innovation, national security, defense and the interior, and various agency heads under them, such as the EPA and the Minerals Commission. Five, recall all police commanders and national security operatives in Galamse enclaves. Have you seen the footage from, from, from Enyinem? There's Galamse going on right behind the police station. Mm -hmm. At any name, we'll, we'll show some in of those Tiwa, videos in a bit. Right behind the police, the police station, mm -hmm. and all these police commanders are still at post. Mm -hmm. Impose a five-year ban on all forms of small-scale mining, not to be issuing licenses. You call labor, oh, come for a meeting. Whilst they are at the meeting, you are busy issuing licenses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then seven, deploy the Ghana Armed Forces to protect our river bodies and forests under a new paradigm which eliminates political partisan control. That is what Professor Jampo was talking about, about the top military official who spoke to him. If you deploy them and say that, look, this is a professional, do your work as celebrated Ghana Armed Forces acclaimed across the world. No political interference. You will see. He was talking about a day. Within hours, all these folks will run out of the place. And in a few hours, this Galamse threat will be over. Eight, immediately stop the issuance of new mining licenses. Nine, carry out a shakeup at Ghana's embassy in China and put in place an extremely strict criteria for the issuance of Ghanaian visas to Chinese nationals. Mm -hmm. Ten, launch an aggressive scientific green Ghana program to restore and regenerate our river bodies and back on massive afforestation and reclamation for Galamse lands. Eleven, provide free comprehensive medical screening and treatment for all Ghanaians affected and exposed to the health dangers. We are talking about all these people suffering diseases, mm -hmm. deformities, and all of Who is taking care of them? Who is looking right. out for them? 12, impose hefty fines on these small-scale mining companies who have violated our responsible mining laws and use these funds for environmental regeneration, public health assistance, and water treatment support. 13, agree on a roadmap to ensure that after the five-year environmental recovery ban, all small-scale mining is prohibited so that we use only a state-owned company, mm -hmm. which will make sure they employ locals from those communities and totally prohibit private small-scale mining by private companies. Mm -hmm. right. 14, the state-owned company will then ensure that only locals from those com communities are engaged under competitive working conditions. Then, finally, revoke LI-2462 and pass new legislation under a certificate of agency to make it illegal for politicians and any other person to engage in the advocacy and promotion of Galamse and impose stiff sanctions for, this, for all those caught violating the law. Mm -hmm. I mean, what is difficult about this? For such a powerful president under the 1992 constitution, which creates this imperial monarchy, this, mm -hmm. this, this all-powerful president, right. you are telling me that you are now with all of this national security apparatus all these accoutrements, all these weapons, this armory. Mm? You control the police. You control the, 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 the armed force. You are commander-in-chief. You are helpless. You suddenly don't have power. But you right. have power to be harassing and intimidating people and descending on innocent, harmless demonstrators. Now I must conclude with my revulsion, utter disgust. I am totally appalled by the statements that leading politicians are making in this fight. They clearly don't get it. 
my colleague in parliament, I mean, he that to had so much respect for him. Dr. Ayua Free, chairman of the health committee. The irony. Oh, he's an MP too. Member of parliament for Efidasi Asukori. Chairman of the health committee. The health committee actually should be convening. He should be convening a crisis health committee meeting in parliament. I would have loved to attend even as a friend of the committee because I'm not a member of the health committee. To look at the crisis that medical doctors, public health practitioners are talking about. Mm -hmm. Then, Different statements. then, then you, you say that you will not ban Galamse today or tomorrow. And then you are seeking to engage in cheap partisanship that it is we in the NDC who have imported people and told them that go into the rivers. That's where we want you to mine. And you are a government. A government. You are advertising your incompetence, your ineptitude. You couldn't stop these, these nation wreckers and arrest them. It is rather, I'm a governor. Mm? Bakavomawo. Felicity. They are the ones you, you have arrested. But the bad guys, the NDC brought, you say they brought, you couldn't arrest them. And you are standing on a the, on the platform advertising such crass incompetence. And you see, what is even more shocking, hmm? Alfred, we have to speak the truth in this country. What is this man's designation? What gave him the capacity to go make this bold declaration? He is Baumier's middle belt campaign coordinator. How come, as we speak, Baumier has not distanced himself from his campaign coordinator? He hasn't fired him. Shocking. Does Baumier endorse those statements? Was he speaking on behalf of Baumier? And this is the second term. I saw another video by your network, Mreku Duka, who is Baumier's coordinator for mining. And those who know Mreku Duka very well were shocked when they heard the announcement. I won't say more. But in that video, say he endorses Galam Say. Well, he said that he, he, the call for a ban yeah. on yes. small scale mining. Yeah. And Galam Say it, it's, and, not, and, it's, not, it's not one that has been well thought through and, and it's and, going to and, have far reaching and Baum, consequences. And Baumia was not sitting, endorsing Baumia was illegal sit, mining. Baumia was sitting there. Baumia was sitting there. Baumia was there. And all of these people who are key elements, chief architects of the Baumia campaign, have not been sanctioned. What does that say about Baumia and the fight against Galamse? What does that say? Look, you recall in the United States of America, when the Americans said that, look, President Obama's pastor, they don't like his sermons. He's very divisive. He's inciting the people. He's incendiary and all of that. The Obamas issued a statement to distance themselves. When it continued, they issued another statement that they have even stopped attending the church. They won't go again. Please, Americans, please forgive us. We won't go again. That is decent leadership. Respect for the people. These people are rather being hailed and being supported. Then, then there is the other statement by Gideon Buako. I mean, I couldn't believe it. Baumier spokesperson, Gideon oh. Boaku, puts up a post which says, hypocrisy is when we gloss over the polluted Odor River and Kole Lagoon in Accra, but demonstrate over a polluted Pra or Tano River outside Accra. Can you believe this? Calling all of us, organized labor, all these eminent bishops and everybody, hypocrites. Because we haven't, we haven't seen the Odor River. Hey, what's happening in this country? Then Someone the worst one has come from Richard Ahiagba. As for the Asante Akim South MP, who says we will lose our seats if we impose a ban, I think that he should be just ignored. I mean, seats. So political power is Someone more important than human about. lives. Let me, I need to talk about Richard Ahiagba's post. Because, in a minute. because that, is, that is most offensive. Richard Ahiagba, the MPP communication director, posted this. Is it true that the leadership of organized labor received 400,000 Ghana City donations from the NDC 
If it is true, is organized labor raising funds for anything? If yes, have they approached other political parties for donations? If organized labor is not raising funds, what informed the NDC's donation? How is the NDC's donation related to organized labor's sudden anti-Galamse advocacy? Can you believe that? Sudden anti-Galamse advocacy and the subsequent declaration of a nationwide strike. Is it a mere coincidence or is there more to it? I would vouch for organized labor, but that wouldn't be enough because it smells fishy. Galamse is a menace. Let's not politicize the fight to defeat. Can you believe that? That all of this, look at Professor Jampo. Hmm? Where, where will you where, will you even dare attempt? Hmm? The TUC Secretary General, four hundred thousand for all these people, the eminent bishops, clergy, all of them to go and share four hundred thousand. That is cheap. Okay. <laughs> no respect for the Ghanaian people. So I will look at our black party again. And, and, I, and let me just uh, ask this again. This, these, these issues you mentioned, uh, information you have that they have registered. Oh yes, I have they, that. They, this, this information. Uh, from the we, office, we of, the office of the register we, of companies, I have, the, I have the articles of incorporation here. The, all the incorporation documents are here. I'll give, I'll, I'll give you copies. Okay. And it's on so, the min mining repository. And, and their companies are captured at the Ghana okay. Mining Repository for right. having received licenses to mine. And when I you see. go to the areas, we've done the cadastral mapping, uh, you see river bodies there. There are, there are, there are forests there. We'll check, I mean, it. It's, it's, we'll it's, check it. What is going on in this country? And, and, and also do our own verification it's, it's, here it's as, as well. Because we people haven't are independently out to checked. just commit mass murder, yes. to just kill us. Thank you. Samuel Okuja Tua Blackwa is a member of parliament for the North Town constituency. I would, I would need that. And I'll show you these rivers that we've, in fact, one of our viewers who is a, a forestry commission officer mm. sent us this. Just on the screen there. Uh, the Tano River, let's flip to the next. And Ancobra, as we see it, all these areas. And we'll, we'll be back shortly after this quick break. Lawyer Martin, people will have a take on this matter because he's serving as legal counsel for some of these protesters who have been arrested as well. And uh, Samuel Okujato Blackwa is an off town member of parliament. He is also the chair of the Government Assurances Committee and the chief intercessor, the number of things that he's been, he's been, his intercepted has been also been putting out this morning. A number of your messages, I have some documents to share with you as well on the next issue. Stay with us. We'll be back shortly.